Imagine yourself seeing something so beautiful, so magnificent, and so explosive, it will leave you confused, maybe even a little bit scared. On a serene, starry night, you lay on the grass floor of a mountain, looking up at the stars, as suddenly something unbelievable happens. You cannot believe your eyes as you see a powerful light explode in the sky. That dazzling star in the night sky is no longer a star, at least not anymore. That dazzling point of light is the result of an explosion of a dying star called supernova. Welcome back to Science Faction. Join us today to find out all about supernovae and what to expect when a star near us does explode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. Let's get into it. So, what is a supernova? A supernova is a stunning explosion caused by the disintegration of a large star. Just imagine if our sun erupted as a supernova, the resultant shock wave would most likely not only incinerate the entire Earth, but it would boil away on the side facing the sun. In the contemporary age, one of the most well-known supernovas is SN1987A, which is still being researched by astronomers to understand how a supernova evolves in the first few decades following the explosion. Well, you will be shocked to know that humans have been witnessing supernovas before the invention of telescopes or any other advanced scientific equipment. The oldest documented supernova is RCW86, which was seen by Chinese astronomers in AD 185. It was called the Guest Star, and it remained in the sky for eight months. Recently, astronomers concluded that the explosion of RCW 86 happened around 2,000 years ago and was caused by a Type 1 supernova, which is a stable white dwarf or dead star that was pushed past the edge of stability when a host star unloaded material onto it. Now, what is a Type 1 supernova? We must first understand the history of supernovas and how they are categorized further depending on their features. The History of Supernovas The term supernova did not become popular until the 1930s. It was first used by Walter Bade and Fritz Zwicky at Mount Wilson Observatory in reference to an explosive event known as S. Andromedae. Before the invention of the telescope, supernovas were witnessed by many famous astronomers and one such astronomer was Tycho Brahe. In 1604, in his work De Nova Stella, Brahe described his observations of the new star, which gave origin to the term nova. A nova, on the other hand, is not the same as a supernova. Both are abrupt bursts of brightness caused by hot gases being blasted outward, but when it comes to a supernova explosion, it is catastrophic and marks the end of the star's life. Several decades later, Johannes Kepler made another similar finding that confused scientists and stellar watchers for years. The eminent German mathematician and astronomer, who also established the three principles of planetary motion, noticed a light that was brighter than any other star in the sky, so brilliant that it could be seen during the day for a short period of time. He spent the next few months monitoring the mystery object and later authored a book about his findings which included illustrations of where he observed it in the sky. It wasn't until the 1930s that supernovas were discovered and explained by Walter Bodd and Fritz Zwicky at California's Mount Wilson Observatory. Kepler's star was eventually discovered to be a supernova remnant, connected with the remnant SN1604 in the constellation Ophiuchus. But now we know a lot about the many supernovas that exist, despite the fact that they occur rarely enough which is approximately three times every century. The nearest known supernova progenitor candidate is the star IK Pegasi b, which is a binary star system roughly 150 light years away from our solar system. The primary star in the system, IK Pegasi a, is a typical main sequence star similar to our Sun. Types of Supernovas As we know, supernovas are divided into two types, type 1 supernova and type 2 supernova. When a tiny, dim, white dwarf star collapses due to infalling debris from a partner, a Type 1 supernova occurs. Generally, Type 1 supernovae happen in close binary systems, which consist of two average stars orbiting each other very tightly. When one of the stars runs out of hydrogen, it enters the red giant stage 
before collapsing into a white dwarf. Since Type 1 supernovas are faint and dim, they are difficult to find in outer space. But when it comes to a Type 2 supernova, it occurs as a result of the explosion of an old big star. A Type 2 supernova occurs in stars with masses of more than 10 solar masses. It begins fusing progressively heavier elements in shells surrounding the center after leaving the main sequence. The energy produced by the fusion process in the core eventually becomes inadequate to resist gravity and the core collapses. If the hydrogen outer envelope is still present in the star, the core collapses, starting a fusion process in the hydrogen layer resulting in a supernova explosion. Very interesting, isn't it? However, there is also a third type of supernova called the electron capture supernova, which sits on the borderline between the other two types of supernovae. For decades, it has been hypothesized by astronomers and scientists, but has never been observed in the real world. For the first time, scientists from the University of California Santa Barbara's Las Cumbres Observatory identified the first solid evidence for this new type of supernova. Nevertheless, we do observe supernova leftovers, which are expanding clouds in space where stars used to be. There are numerous instances of these clouds found both inside and beyond our galaxy. The Crab Nebula is the most renowned supernova remnant visible from the Northern Hemisphere and is pointed in the direction of the constellation Taurus. In 1967, scientists found the first known pulsar, also called the Crab Pulsar, which is a neutron star and a relic of the supernova that formed the Crab Nebula, the Nova of Orion. Among the supernovae, there is one that received a lot of attention in the media. Yes, we are talking about Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a red supergiant star in the Orion constellation that is nearing the end of its life and is about 550 light years away from our solar system. But suddenly, it started fading in 2019, which made the scientists speculate the life of the giant star even though it is a semi-variable star that brightens and darkens over 400 days. The red supergiant's brightness dropped by 35%, prompting many to think that the star's demise is imminent. However, it turned out that the star was partially obscured by a dust cloud which caused the dimming. But what if Betelgeuse explodes one day? When the explosion occurs, Betelgeuse will shine brightly for weeks or even months, but it will have no effect on Earth since it is 430 light years away from us. When will this event occur? Nobody knows the answer to this question. It might happen in our lifetime or even a million years from now. It is like a ticking bomb that could go off at any time and some even predict that the supernova has already occurred and the light from that event hasn't reached us yet. Yep, that's all for today's episode. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button for future updates. Let us know what you think about supernovae in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.